All right, so for this problem, you have three capacitors that are in series. Capacitor number one, capacitor number two, capacitor number three, they're in series with a five volt voltage source. In this problem, you're asked to find V1, V2, V3, Q1, Q2, Q3, and C1, uh, pardon me, Q1, C, uh, Q1, V1 are both across here. V2, Q2 are both here, and Q3, V3 are across here, which is C3. Okay, your, your capacitor values are 1 microfarad, uh, 1 microfarad for C2, and 4.7 microfarad for C3. These are the same as 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and 4.7 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. All right. Now we know, if we're trying to find the value here, uh, we know that Q, which is the charge across the capacitor plates, are going to be equal to C times V. Okay. If we change this to the Q being the, the charge across the capacitor plates uh, in total here, it, that will be equal to C total times V total. All right. And we can actually do this because this is a series circuit. So the charge across all of these capacitors here are going to be the same because this is a series circuit. So because the charge is going to be across, across uh, the charge across all of these is going to be the same. What we can do is find the total capacitance and multiply by that by total voltage, and we'll be able to get the total charge. In order to find the total capacitance, uh, remember that total capacitance when you have a series circuit is going to be equal to 1 over, in this case, C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, and then we'll take the inverse of that. So then this would be equal to 1 over 1 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 1 over 1 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 1 over 4 times 10 to the minus 6 and then we take the inverse of that so let's go ahead and calculate that out and I'll calculate it on my calculator and you can calculate on yours as I'm doing it so that's going to be equal to 1 over and you want to put parentheses around these here okay when you're entering them into the calculator so that you can get the correct answer so that's 1 over 1 times 10 raised to the minus 6 close parentheses there plus 1 over 1 times 10 raised to the minus 6 close parentheses there plus 1 over and this should be 4.7 I'm sorry it's going to be kind of hard to read in there because I'm writing real small but that's 4.7 times 10 to the minus 6 so that's 1 over open the parentheses 4 times 10 uh, pardon me 4.7 times 10 raised to the minus 6 and close parentheses there and we're going to take the inverse of what we got there and so what we end up with then is a total capacitance which is equal to 4.52 let's just stop it there times 10 to the minus 7 farads as our total capacitance all right 4.52 times 10 to the minus 7 farads as our total capacitance so if we take this total capacitance now and multiply by total voltage in order to find out get our total charge so that total capacitance which is at 4.52 times 10 to the minus 7 farads times the total voltage and total voltage remember is 5 volts we end up with a total charge a QT of 
five. Let's make that two point two. Erase this. Two point two six times ten to the minus six farads. And again, remember, since these are all in series, that means since all capacitors are in series, that means this is also the charge for Q one. The charge for oops. There we go. Charge for Q2 and the charge for Q3. All right. So now we found a charge for all three. We also want to find what the voltage is equal to. And we know that if we take the total charge and divide, let's say, C1, we'd be able to find a voltage across C1 based off of our equation, manipulating our equation from over here but instead using C1 and V1 in order to find or C1 in order to find our V1. So we end up with then that 2.26 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by C1 which is 1 which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 and the charge is in coulombs, by the way. I guess I should have mentioned that uh, before. Charges in coulombs. This is not in farads. Let me go back and change that. Charges in coulombs. Capacitance is in farads. This is coulombs down here. All right. So 2.26 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs divided by the... 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and that's going to give us our answer in voltage. So that becomes, let's see, 2.26 times 10 raised to the minus 6. And we're going to divide that number. Let me put parentheses around this. And what I just did was I put parentheses, and probably that's a little bit difficult to see. Oh, there you go. I put parentheses around there. And we're going to divide that by, oh, parentheses, 1 times 10 uh, raised to the minus 6. And so this is what we have here now on the calculator. When we multiply the two of those together, Oh, pardon me, divide, uh, divide this from this, or divide this by this, that's, there we go. We end up with a voltage of 2.26 volts across capacitor number one. Okay, now the interesting thing is capacitor number two also has the same amount of farads, so then that capacitor also should have the exact same value of 2.26, uh, theoretically anyway. So this then is not only the answer for number one, but it's also the answer for number two. All right. And so now in order to find voltage number two, we're going to take that total charge divided by capacitor number three, and we're gonna find voltage number three, all right? So QT divided by C3 is going to be equal to V3, okay? And so we do the same thing in that 2.26 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs divided by, in this case, it's the 4.7 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And that gives us a V3. Two point two six times ten raised to the minus six, and again you want to put that inside of parentheses. All right, divided by oh, parentheses.
4.7 times 10 raised to the minus 6 close parentheses and that gives us then a charge across number 3 of 0 0.48 volts across resistor uh, pardon me capacitor number 3 all right, so those are our three capacitance values across all three of those resistors. And let's see if we add all three of them up together. So that's two times of this, which is going to give us approximately, what, 4.5, 4.5-ish, uh, plus this half-ish brings us to the 5 volts that we had initially in this problem. All right, so that's that problem.